Okay, so this entire time. <laughs> Cause you said you were ready. This is okay. Never mind. Go ahead. So, our next topic is um. Damn, I really had it. Welcome back to my channel. So I hope you all are doing well. So I have one of my best friends, Afia, here with us, and we're going to have a brunch girl talk. <laughs> She's not like this, so I don't really know what her issue is. So we have mimosas. She is like this. Yeah. And then we have our commentary, <laughs> my other best friend, Sajuri, in the background. You already drink it? Literally just cheers. You're supposed to do it. We didn't even say cheers. What could we just? I just did this. Video. <laughs> <laughs> this is what our friendship is like, though. So we have brunch, and I'm gonna insert the clip right now. We had a discussion that was off camera and we were like, hey, let's bring it to my channel. So one of them being, we were discussing about people who have like multiple sex partners and what are people takes on that. Like me personally, I don't care for it, but some people may or may not. That's just a personal opinion is I prefer to just have one person. Even if you may be talking to dating multiple it's just the one person I like to deal with just because I just feel like it's a safety precautionary just for me but you know typically when I've had conversations like this with my male friends they see no problem with having multiple sex partners now I'm not saying they're hoes <laughs> But I'm just trying to say, like, we kind of have different viewpoints, and I feel like it's the maturity to have those conversations to see what makes it feel like you find that okay, and then what are my takeaways that makes me not okay with it. So do you have, like, any intake on what your personal opinion would be on that? I think most men are okay with it because they're not disclosing that they're dealing with multiple people at one time. That is true. And so if they're keeping you and you're in the dark and you're content in the dark and you don't know what's happening, then everything's cool. Whereas if they brought that conversation to the forefront, it would cause an issue, right? Because I would think you would want to be, especially if you really like that person, you would want to be the only person they're talking to realistically, right? Right. But... Again, realistically, that's not that's not really feasible, nor I think that's a smart decision to do because you should never put, you know, your eggs in one basket, basically. So when do you feel like you should put your eggs in one basket then? When that conversation happens. And a lot more people need to be open to having those conversations. A lot, too many times, we're just like, we're too afraid to bring up conversation and fear that the other person will catch wind that we care too much. And I feel like you trying to pretend like you don't care when you really do care only hurts you at the end of the day. The other person already don't care. So while you're trying to pretend like you don't care, you're hurting your own feelings at the end of the day. So you're best at being like, look, I'm having feelings for you um, and it's starting to bother me that you might be dealing with other people. Um, where is this going? Are we working to exclusive are we just still you know taking that as a goal so like and i've done this in my past where i've asked the question of okay so what are we trying to do mm -hmm. and i've got mixed signals on it so like originally you may say look i'm actually trying to grow us trying to take it to the next level build with each other whatever and then time may go on, and I'm not saying people's opinions don't change or their views 
or what they want doesn't change, but they may not vocalize it. So I'm under the impression we're still focusing on just us, but now you're doing outside things where you're no longer notifying me of what's going on. That's when I don't feel okay with it because my biggest thing is always keeping me like out of the dark. Like I like to know what's going on. So even if you feel like I don't want to handle it, you feel like, oh, it's going to hurt her feelings. I would rather you just bluntly tell me, yes, there's another girl. I'm dating this person. I'm having sex with this person. Whatever it is, just tell me because I feel like me thinking it's just us and then for me to find out information later on and then I come back and slap me in the face because you were the only person I'm dealing with because that's what we originally discussed. And then you step out doing who knows what with who knows what. I just can't deal with that where I am now. That might not just be me being mature enough, but I just feel like I deserve that type of respect level even if you feel like that's not okay to others to know like, oh, there's other people. I'd rather know there's other people. So then I know, okay, I don't feel any shame if I go out and date other people as well. Cause then it's like, it's an even playing field compared to one person is doing who knows what while this person is just waiting on them. I think when you're into dating, there's only two things that you should know for sure, right? You should know for sure that the only reality or the only truth you'll ever know is the one that you possess. You cannot force another person to tell you what's up. You can ask them, you have no guarantee that they will tell you the truth, right? The second thing, again, that I really emphasize is that you need to be self-aware. So if you know it don't sound right, right? Mm. You know it ain't sounding right, it ain't looking right. You know it. Your gut will never lead you wrong. That is true. And you know what that feels like. We're not talking about you being paranoid or you letting past things affect your present judgment. We're talking about tangible evidence to show that whatever you're feeling inside is what's actually happening. Therefore, you have to be not only self-aware, but also comfortable to have conversations that are uncomfortable. You cannot put a bow on shit. You can't. Shit is still shit, and <laughs> it's never going to be packaged any prettier than what it actually is. I think it does take some emotional maturity to come to that conclusion. Because, again, you can either deal with what's going on and stifle it, or you can vocalize it. Choosing to vocalize it does you more justice than you being pissed the whole time and then you wait to get home to your friends and to talk shit about what just happened. <laughs> you could have just told this man while y'all was at the Cheesecake Factory what's wrong, but you're over stewing piss over the brown bread. Why, 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 why can't we be because a, a casual day? Like, <laughs> we're on a casual day, okay, nothing's wrong with the brown bread. Everybody <laughs> knows it like a nice brown bread and butter, okay? And y'all, you just- Well, you might as well take me to Olive Garden, my head. <laughs> <laughs> but you over there steaming hot, lathering up your brown bread, pissed, right, mad. You you so mad, you don't even care the brown bread is going. Now you're moved on to the sourdough, and we all know that's nasty. Yeah. And so now you're really, you're, you're doubly pissed, because now you are eating something that you don't even like. Not only are you eating something that you don't like, you with a man you don't even like. You know you mad, you know you are so mad, and you sitting here listening to things that you know you don't, you're not content with, you are dealing with, you're in a situation where you're dealing with things that you know you're not comfortable about, which also goes into setting boundaries. That's another important thing to have in dating and solid boundaries. And you just sitting there like, I am just <laughs> mad. But for whatever reason, you don't feel the need to bring up why you're mad or you're upset about because you're too concerned without being to be labeled as a person that cares too much. I like this person, but he is doing these things that I don't care for, but I do actually like him and I feel like he has the potential to be something good. Okay. What about those people? Up that. Stop throwing love potential. Be what it is. Reality is reality every day, right? We're in April. We would love to be basking in the sun and doing cartwheels outside and doing all types of hot girl stuff. But are we actually doing our inside drinking mimosas while snowing? 
that's the reality, right? I can't do cartwheels outside because if I twist my ankle by doing by rolling around on the ice, y'all yeah, could do. Who no, want to do a snow angel? But who wants to do that in the middle of April? I surely do not. So that's the reality. You can fall in love with potential all you want to. Reality will hit you over the head over and over again because it's what's currently happening. Point blank. Period. You have to stop caring about being nice. You have. To. I have that problem. I being nice that. is truly overrated. It is. You it can is. be nice but still be respectful. And you have to stop caring about being the nice person and be paid as the nice person because you can say something really nice. Like, I can say in a really nice voice, oh my god, Jenna, I really hate your rug. It's coming in a very nice voice, but what I said was just rude, wasn't it? Like, I'm not rude, you said. Exactly. She clearly, that was she said that the wrong way. Even though I said it in a nice voice, right? So there's no point in delivering shit in pretty packages. Oh my god. Okay, so this one ties into a more personal note of full on no wax no shaving just full on not almost i'm not gonna say like bushy the beef whacker but i'm gonna be honest i don't do the wild thornberries honey. yes okay i am not into that it's not for me um I don't judge other women who are like that. To me, it's like you're allowed to do whatever you feel comfortable doing. No, I'm talking about men. Oh, for men? Yeah. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just say no. Ladies, you do whatever you feel comfortable with. Oh, men, shit. Absolutely. And I say that because I don't know what it, I don't, I just feel like I, it's just different. It's just way different. But why? It's just different, Jayla. <laughs> but why is it different? Like, if you really want to get into it, like, say for example, I, don't I want to come in and do maintenance the same. I really don't. Most <laughs> women, the way we try to, you know, keep our, you know, things smelling good, everything right, is just different. Yeah, do that, it, there, there's there's some men who are very type A, really do keep up with everything, you know. Moisturize, you know, yeah, we all, yeah, I would think at the age of, you know, you're in your 20s, you should really know how to take care of yourself at this point. But, you know, there's also nice some shade. men who are still using Axe body wash and 3 in 1 body wash from Walmart. She is, like, she's being real specific at this point, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> I was like, so what the fuck? Basically, there's a lot of men who have, you know, just. I just think a lot of men don't have what good like hygiene shit. <laughs> just some certain just habits. Like I think women really emphasize self care more wait. than men do. But I'm not gonna say all women because I've experienced the women I've walked past and I'm like, Ooh. well, no, we've all had <laughs> <have> a lot <laughs> of uh, maybe <laughs> something a little bit too right, <laughs> and um, that's true. It has happened, but. I don't know. I don't think men, uh, even talking about like men, like with nails, right? Oh, that's and kind of you, like, oh, we're gonna get into it right now. Woo. Um, woo. you know, <laughs> something as simple as just keeping your nails clean. I'm talking about like just underneath, <laughs> and you don't have to necessarily buy the brush. Surprise, there's a brush out there that does this. It does. Um, <laughs> it really does. It's a dollar. It's literally a dollar. <laughs> nail clippers um a nail file even if you want to get crazy and you know even if you're in the shower you can just it's a simple even when you wash your hands when you just do a little this a little you know like when you write that on. together and all that that will come out so you know and even like men's feet i don't know what it is they don't oh i've dated a guy and I asked him, I said, because we were in the bed, <laughs> like a scratch on like my leg. Bear claw it was a scratch skin. across my leg. Who would have like, thought you were sleeping with fucking bears? <laughs> what the fuck? I said, do you get your feet done? And he was like, I've never had my feet done. And I'm like, why? He's just like, I just feel like men aren't like supposed to get their feet done. I'm like, who Holy said so? It's like a fake story time. Remember when my tire got flat? <laughs> so me and Afia went out and I got a flat tire 
And I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how to pump air in my tire, but I learned that diet. But we both called at the time. People, no, did we call? Or we text? I texted, I think. I called. She called, I texted. And I texted dude and I was like, yeah, I just got a flat tire. Like, are you able to like come, like, come and help me? And he wasn't far, like he was like five minutes or so. We're like at a part of our campus where it's essentially like almost kind of like the center because it's pretty close to other parts of campus and also part of like main campus. So regardless of what direction you're coming from, it's less than five minutes to get over there. But go ahead. So I text him, I didn't get no response. Then you call. I called two men. <laughs> um, oh no, that's men to come and help and you know 24 hours have passed <laughs> and the excuse was I was asleep I was asleep I, I didn't if I, if I knew I would have right I would have came so basically if we was trapped inside the road I guess me and John's folks would get slick and it would have been <laughs> the end of us no because one was like I thought y'all was on the expressway oh yeah, I said yeah, yeah. what like he would really make the track. Mind you, again, the expressway again would have been right there. But for him to get on there would have been about five minutes. I feel like I said this just to chime in on like reliability because I feel like I cannot rely on no man. Like I feel like that's why I feel like I've learned how to pump fucking air in my tires since that incident has happened. And it's just like it's taught me to be very self dependent. I've already been that. But I feel like I became more as when I tried to give you an inch and y'all didn't even come through. I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna just learn how to do this shit myself. And I have to depend on you to help me with a flat tire. Yeah, it was definitely like none of y'all up. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even that late. It wasn't it was even, like 11? It was, it, it was definitely not even close to 12 a.m. So it was just <laughs> like, how are y'all asleep right now? So, to Jen's point, I still know how to pump air tires. She was out there doing it by herself. I, yeah, she was just I was watching in the car, in the car. I refused. I tried to pump air tires by tires. My mother still don't know how to do it. I don't oh ask God. her to change a tire. I barely, <laughs> the only thing I know from my car is pretty much when to go get an oil change and when I need to go fix a headlight. That's about it. <laughs> And even with that, even when it comes to putting air in my tires, I don't get out the car. I don't. I've never been anywhere to put air in my tires. I don't. Because I refuse to do it. I barely get out the car to wash my car. And so... She will not dry this shit off. I, she just I won't dry. pull it off. I don't do none of that. I, I really like, don't. What the fuck? So do you think you can like... I recently had a conversation. Do you feel like if you had an ex who cheated, do you think you can like move on from it you feel like <laughs> you said that so quick so for example they cheated in their past and you know some people get back with their exes and they hold on either grudges towards them or they'll let it go my opinion is if i know i'm gonna hold on to a grudge i'm not gonna get back in the relationship with you if i know i'm gonna always keep throwing in your face well, remember you did this and this and this. I feel like there's no productivity of me being in the relationship with you because it's like we're not moving forward. I'm steady throwing out old shit. And I feel like that's why men get frustrated. They're like, you keep bringing up this other past stuff, but we supposed to be moving on. But I feel like at the same instance, women feel, but you're doing things that you did in your past that's making me reflect on you did this in the past and now you're doing it in the present so what's to make me think you're not going to do the full-on thing and cheat now i think that one i said this a while ago but there is no true reward in being a ride or die there is no <laughs> reward because it's either a deal with it come with that ride or you die so yeah. there is no reward in doing things like that you also have to know yourself right so, in a relationship where somebody does cheat on you, you have to, one, allow yourself to feel everything you feel after that action. You cannot try to be like, no, because whatever your reasoning, you know, you give yourself on why you're trying to almost 
not feel the depths of that pain instead of just letting feel that pain. Sometimes it's okay to be like, this is bad, this is awful, and I feel that way. It's okay to feel that way. So, personally, just knowing myself, I cannot get back with somebody who cheated on me because I feel like you do not, you know, like you don't respect me no more. For you to do that to me requires you to step out on the trust I have in you the vulnerability I have with you and those are not things that I take lightly and for you to basically take those things and say you don't care no matter if it happened within a minute, the matter of uh, a couple minutes an hour those are still the moments of time that no longer was a concern of yours and that to me is the issue because if I'm giving that to you that means a lot to me. And for you to be like, basically, I don't care about that, speaks volumes of what you only think about me. But for me to take you about, speaks a lot about myself. Because why do I believe that love is suffering? Because it's not. You do that all by yourself. Girl! <laughs> I really can. I really can. And I don't have to deal with this with you. So with that being said, I'm going to go. And I'm gonna go find somebody where I can restore that trust back into versus then you only have a that has a quarter or less of trust for me to even have. But one thing I feel like we need to nip in the bud now as women. We need to and I'm guilty of this myself. We need to no longer accept like just like we can just kick it in the crib. Like I did. I was at a point where I was just kicking it in the crib and just thinking like spending time together was enough. And I want to say that's be like the first day. Like they would actually do official first date, but then it's like as time progressed, it was just like us kicking in the crib ordering food. Like people, men be like, that's just the vibe. Like we could just, I feel like I'm just comfortable with you because I could just lay in my house. And I could order some food, have some wine, and this is just comfortable. Yeah, that's the reason why I mean, I don't want to take you out because one, you broke, and two, you have other women. I learned that the hard way before this relationship I'm in now. I don't know if y'all can hear her because I don't think they're going to hear you. So, my friend was saying to Jury, she said. I'm the the only one that's been snatched up, honey. She yes. She's off the streets. I know, she's off the streets. Off the we market. Still, off the market. Me and Jersey, y'all. Me and Jersey, We still wearing our jerseys. And Even I'm wearing it I told her last week to Jury. I told her to Jury, I'm over the streets, but go ahead. I'm still repping the streets because I've seen. Look. <laughs> <laughs> streets sometimes be kind of lit. Um. But no, she said. So there's only two reasons why a man who does not want to take you out, either one, he's broke, or two, it's other women who can't take you. He doesn't want to take you out. Right. Right out there. But like, we've been in instances a lot of times where it can be a social gathering. And we're the type of people where, even though we may have our friend group, we still will sprout out and yeah. talk to other women outside of it just to have a conversation. But a lot of women are like guarded, I feel, where they just feel like, no, I'm not gonna talk to you. You're not part of my friend group. So, like, who, think, who are you to talk to? And it's outside factors that contribute to this environment where it can only be one, right? Because it's this idea of fighting for the scarce resource of power. And so we feel like amongst each other, we gotta fight tooth and nail for the scarce resource of power. But in reality, at least in this regular setting of like a party or like a bar, we're not gonna be doing that. It's very casual and no power to be won. It's really for us we're all just trying to get just, drunk. We're just trying to, I mean, unwind. Like, you know, it's a weekend. You know, a lot of us have finally off of work. You know, if you're at school, you finally have a week, the weekend off, a couple of days off to not worry about that type of stuff. That's so serious. Like, women will really have beef. Like, un, like non-known of it's, beef with it's, you. It's, it's, and you'll be like, what's okay, the hell the problem? The wolf always will howl at the moon, but the moon will never howl back. And that's just that on that. And I'm not going to do it with you because personally, I do not feel that way. When I go out, especially if I'm with a group, good group of friends, right? I'm in a good head space. I'm genuinely happy about me in that space and I'm happy. The last thing I'm thinking about is not getting here. I mean, like it's so-and-so. I'm about to, anybody who looks me up and down wrong, it's going to be an issue. 
that's not the initial vibe I'm trying to give off. I really love just to have a good time, period. And so to come into a space where the vibe is essentially who is the best, I'm be like, this is very odd for us to be doing. I'm just like, well, why did you come out? If that's the type of thing you're gonna be kind of putting off to people, the vibe um, that you're trying to put off to people is that basically I'm better, I'm this, I'm that, and I'm going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with whoever, regardless if I know them or not, about who's the best within this space. Wait, are you lit? What the fuck? <laughs>